Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining our webinar today. I'm Karen Pendle. I'll be your host and presenter for the entire webinar. I uh, appreciate you taking the time to join or listen to this recording. So we're going to talk about the pros and cons of Eloqua, Marketo, HubSpot, their marketing hub, and Salesforce Marketing Cloud. And a little bit about me for why the heck I'm the one chosen to present this topic. So this is an area of expertise that um, I've really tried to keep up my knowledge on over the last 10 plus years, and especially the last three years that I've been doing this webinar. We used to do it monthly, now we do it quarterly. That said, if you ever want to have this conversation just one-on-one -on -one or me with your team, I'm happy to do that. And if you're, you're like, we're not even looking at HubSpot, for example, or we're not looking at Eloqua, we can talk about the ones that you are evaluating and I'm happy to help you, no cost. Um, so I've got 17 years in the marketing space. I started out as a marketer using marketing automation and then switched over to consulting. So over the last 13 years, I've, I've spent that time consult and advise customers on which platform is best fit for them short term and long term. Um, it's not always, you know, one or two of these that we recommend that definitely they've changed over the years, they've innovated, they go through periods where they're not as innovated. Um, so I'm, I'm very candid in how I approach this because I really just try to stick to the facts and give you guys that information. And having been a marketer, it helps me understand why we need these platforms um, and what they're helpful for, what they're not helpful for, because there's obviously uh, rumors out there of what they can do, and sometimes they cannot do certain things. So anyway, uh, I'm based in Tennessee. I'm from upstate New York, actually from Syracuse, New York, OSU, um, and spend a lot of time back up there in New York near the Catskills, where I actually moved from to Tennessee. And that's my partner, Amy, and our two of our three dogs. Um, actually, that's in the Shokan Reservoir in upstate New York. So I'm, I, the categories for this webinar are really focused on what I think would make the most sense, the most automation focused categories. If you just need to do email marketing and aren't as concerned about personalization and journeys and such and nurture campaigns, there's MailChimp, there's SendGrid, there's tools out there that can do a good job and uh, do it cheaper than a marketing automation platform, for example, with just sending an email or just sending a text message like Twilio is great at that and other platforms are as well. So when you think about marketing automation platforms, trying to do multi-channel marketing, evolve and achieve eventually one day omni-channel marketing. So all those multiple channels are, are tied together. The branding is similar. All of the different communications that you're sending out are optimized for devices, not just emails look really good, but the text messages render well, et cetera. And your website your, it goes on and on. So, Automation focus categories are in front of you. Um, that's why we've picked them out. We're not going to tell you which one has the better email builder or the better builder for forms. We're going to touch on those things, but we're really trying to focus on why you pay more money and get a marketing automation platform versus, say, a point solution like an email tool or a text messaging tool, et cetera. So we're going to start with the apps that you can add on to these products. Some of them are free, some are paid. Uh, then we'll touch on the APIs, how strong are each of these platforms APIs, and then we'll talk about the native, whenever you hear me say native, that's out of the box functionality that comes with the platform. Um, so we're going to talk about the native CRM integrations, oftentimes a lot of companies we work with have a CRM system, some have CDP, some have both, some have homegrown databases, so um, we'll touch on that. And then, you know, getting the data in and out of the platform, that's kind of why I start there. Then we talk about data management and retention, like how long is data retained in these platforms, like activities they're tracking? How well does it manage data that comes into the marketing automation platform from different sources? Um, and then we'll switch over to custom objects. It all has to do with data really on the first row there for the most part. Um, but custom objects are just another location to store data in the marketing automation platform. I'll dig into more examples of why you would use custom objects so you can better wrap your head around it if you, if you aren't familiar. Then we're going to switch to campaign management. Some people call it orchestrations or journeys. Um, but ultimately, how do we have a really good multi-channel campaign that's personalized and effective ultimately? So um, I'm not going to get into exactly how we do that, but how the platforms play well with campaign management. Some don't as well. 
And then scoring, automated scoring, um, where do they compare there? I will say scoring is probably the category where there is the least amount of difference. And then the other category is kind of a catch-all. So I've worked with literally at this point, 100 plus organizations, probably in the hundreds of helping them with their evaluations. Or in some cases, they didn't ask me to help. I just listened in and watched. So I've learned a lot. The other category is where I saw people pick a platform during implementation early on with that platform, they were unhappy. And it's because they found out, oh, we don't have enough users included in the version of this product that we just bought. Or it doesn't actually have a robust reporting tool. Wait a minute, I thought it did. So I tried to compile a couple of things where people were pretty angry um, with some of the vendors when they picked them. So let's get right into it. If you have any questions, please pop them in the Q&A and I'll try to answer them um, or in the chat. If you have any feedback, please share it with me. Um, I update this material every month, even though the webinar is quarterly, it changes every month. It literally does. So um, it's important that we keep a close eye on what's changing. And I update this and share this with you all. It's not all me that knows all this information. Um, I reach out to my colleagues at Sojourn. So at Sojourn, we're an agency that supports services for Eloqua Marketo, Salesforce Marketing Cloud, as well as Pardot, or they call it account engagement now. Um, we don't service HubSpot, but we have a partner that we lean on whenever we need HubSpot services. So that to say, we have a lot of expertise in-house about these platforms. I also gather the information directly from the vendors, for example, in their help centers or their knowledge bases, their launch pads or their app stores, et cetera. So again, trying to give you guys the facts. But let's start with the history first, because if you understand the history on why these platforms came about, it helps you wrap your head around, well, that makes sense for why those two platforms of these four have higher limits with everything. Okay, so let's just dive into it. So Eloqua was founded first in 1999. And then you have in 2006, Marketo and HubSpot came out. And then, sorry, <laughs> Salesforce Marketing Cloud was second after Eloqua just a year later. So Salesforce Marketing Cloud, it wasn't Salesforce Marketing Cloud in, in the year 2000. It was Exact Target. Exact Target is the, the, the key product that makes up Salesforce Marketing Cloud. Now, technically speaking, if you look at Salesforce's website, Salesforce Marketing Cloud has multiple products. They have a CDP, they have Datarama, they have Mobile Studio, Social Studio, and they have Engagement Studio. We're really focusing on the Engagement Studio portion of Salesforce Marketing Cloud, but I'm going to reference the other studios where it makes sense to in comparison to these other platforms um, and Pardot as well. So they each have been acquired except for HubSpot. They're their own entity still. Um, and then the parent companies you can see there, Oracle bought Eloqua in 2012, Adobe bought Marketo a couple of years later in 2018, Salesforce bought Exact Target uh, in 2013. Their fiscal year ends, I'm sharing that. If, if you have the luxury of timing your evaluation and purchase of one of these platforms, the last month of their fiscal year, that is the month of your strongest negotiation power to get the steepest discount possible. Caveat to that is you can still get a very strong discount on all of these platforms. List pricing, to give you an idea of what their list pricing is, I say that with air quotes because you should never pay list pricing. Uh, list pricing is what we negotiate down from. So just as an example here, Marketo Jumpstart at $1,900 per month, as it says here, per month for up to 10,000 records roughly for each one of these. Um, you would pay, you should pay less than that. So um, and in a perfect world, if you wanted to buy Marketo, November would be the best month to buy it and, and negotiate the best discount. But we don't always have that luxury. Most of us rarely do. So um, now the next thing, this is really important part of their history. Where What would, was the product initially made for as far as market focus, sized organizations? And then what about today? So um, initially Eloqua was built to be an enterprise marketing automation platform. It was built for companies like NetApp, McAfee, Dell, these big companies, mainly technology companies adopted marketing automation first and the bigger companies did and bought Eloqua, many of them. Aprimo was another one back in the day. Unica, platforms that you may not even heard of that aren't very popular these days or even some of them around. But Eloqua has been out there the longest with the ones that are still out there and was built for big companies and has innovated or evolved over the last 20 plus years to make it usable for, as it even says here, 
all size, size organizations. Marketo saw an opportunity, their founders did some years after Eloquo was started and focused on the SMB market and more of those small businesses, the small of uh, the medium businesses, they did a really great job and they grew quickly focusing on SMB. Salesforce Marketing Cloud or Exact Target again, back in the day when it was started, um, was focused like Eloqua on enterprise, mostly B2C. Eloqua was mostly B2B then. Marketo was mostly B2B for SMB. HubSpot came along. They've got a couple hubs, right? They've got a content hub, CRM hub, marketing hub. We're talking about their marketing hub, their marketing automation platform. They really have focused on the, the smaller organizations. Now they have grown. And, and as you can see here, the market focused, you know, we're talking about like the size of the organizations as far as revenue and employees. All four of these platforms now really say they're a good fit for all organizations of different sizes. That is debatable, so I won't get into it. But um, they also have tweaked their functionality and added functionality or modified functionality to be as best as possible used by both B2B and B2C organizations. That is debatable as well, because you have platforms like Eloqua and Marketo, et cetera, that are just focused on selling into B2C organizations. For example, at Oracle, they have responses. Adobe has what they call Adobe Campaign. Um, and anyway, so when there's companies that have both B2C and B2B marketing, they typically go with one of these platforms because they have better scalability in various areas and usability by users to not poke their eyes out. Okay, so let's keep moving. Now, because each of these platforms, as you can see in that last row, have different names for their versions, I'm going to try to keep it as simple for you as possible by referring to the versions as small, medium, large. Small being the cheapest, large being the most expensive, the most feature packed. So let's dive into it. Okay, um, and this is gonna be the, the structure of the rest of the webinar where you're gonna see the platforms in no specific order um, just lined up. So if we just look at marketing automation is one solution typically, and if, if a company does have a full marketing cloud, marketing automation is one piece of it. So if we look at the different categories of what typically are in a marketing cloud, there's different products or solutions in there. So we can see Oracle, Adobe, Salesforce, and HubSpot, they all check the box for marketing automation platforms. And I've listed out the names of those platforms. But what about analytics, multi-touch attribution analytics, things like that, um, business intelligence tools, things like that. So everybody has those boxes checked except for HubSpot. And then website and mobile testing, like rendering testing, personalization testing, et cetera. You can see each of these has a solution and they're named as such. Um, a content, manage plat content management platform, which oftentimes has a digital asset management platform or a DAM included with it. Everybody has one of those. DMPs, those are going to be in the past, in the next couple of years, by the way that they function and the way that privacy regulations have increased, like with internet browsers, just for those examples, in that example, and also email compliance, anyways. Specifically for internet browsing, um, DMPs are still used, but they're going to eventually, I would say, in the next say, two years, become replaced by CDP functionality. CDPs, um, and so it's with the DMPs, you can see Oracle and Adobe have one. Salesforce has retired theirs already. HubSpot has never had one. So let me just skip to it. You guys can read the rest, but in a nutshell, HubSpot doesn't really have a marketing cloud. Um, Salesforce absolutely does, so does Oracle and Adobe, but you can see that there's some gaps in red for where they don't have a solution. Now, I don't recommend typically going with one vendor, like Oracle, for example, for all your marketing cloud solutions. So they have some really strong products here, just as an example with Oracle, but then they have some that are not as strong. So I always recommend going with best of breed versus one cloud. So, and it, it's the same thing with Adobe and Salesforce and HubSpot. Of course, with HubSpot, you would have a lot of solutions missing. So we get asked that a lot. Like, should we try to go all Adobe Marketing Cloud? Of course, there's cost advantages there. Hypothetically, their platforms would integrate better, but that doesn't always happen in reality. So, I mean, there are advantages to it, but typically we see people happier, like more successful by their metrics and users are happier using the platforms when they go best of breed versus all one marketing cloud. 
Okay, so let's talk about integration, specifically the apps for these platforms and their APIs. So apps are not just used for data to go back and forth between the marketing automation platform and say a CRM or a data warehouse or homegrown database of some type. They're also used for some of these platforms to make them operate multi-channel. So for example, um, let's see here, if you wanna do print pieces like print mail or direct mail, none of these platforms do that out of the box. So you use a third-party app on top of them. So first things first, the total number of certified apps, and then you can see the name of their app store. So Eloqua has 265 certified. Um, Marketo has only 44. Now, the rest of these numbers, if you just go to Marketo and look at the Adobe Exchange and you hone in on Marketo, you'll see the 44. Those are certified. Adobe had a different process for certifying apps than Marketo did before Adobe bought Marketo. If you worked with Marketo like years ago before Adobe bought them, they had over 300 apps for Marketo, but they weren't all certified. The certification process, we've been through it at Sojourn for a couple of these vendors. We used to build apps for marketing automation platforms. We do not do that anymore, but we made a, a, a tool called Email Builder when they didn't have great Email Builder tools natively. And to go through the process to get that app certified was strenuous. It basically was Oracle, Adobe, Salesforce, HubSpot's way of making sure your product, your app for their platform is safe for data exchange, for usability, compliant. Um, so it's a rigorous process. So that's why the certified is in there. And then the, let's talk about the API. So the REST API, and this is going to be specifically the daily request limit, the REST API is oftentimes used to build those apps I mentioned. It also can be used for data transfers. So you can see Eloqua and Salesforce um, and HubSpot are almost identical. Salesforce has the most robust REST API. You can see 555,555 versus 500,000 for Eloqua, 500,000 for HubSpot, daily request limit. Marketo, way lower, 50,000. Now, Adobe does a cute little thing where they allow you to increase this. You can pay more to increase this, but this is what these platforms were built with to use the platforms best. Can you try to do more than 500,000 daily request limits of the REST API with Eloqua? Sure. Will some of them have errors? Yes. So this is really what they're built best for. Now let's flip over to the bulk API. So the bulk API is very commonly used for data exchanges exchanges of data between platforms. So the export, getting data out of the marketing automation platform to somewhere else. Um, Eloqua, they don't actually have a published limit for it. And I can tell you from our team's firsthand experience with the Eloqua API, specifically the bulk API and extracting large amounts of data out of Eloqua, it's extremely high. Now, Marketo, 500 megabytes, Salesforce Marketing Cloud 10, HubSpot 32. And then the ability to import data into the marketing automation platform using the bulk API. So um, Eloqua and HubSpot tie at 32 megabytes, Marketo and Salesforce 10 megabytes. So it's interesting, Salesforce Marketing Cloud has the strongest REST API, but the weakest bulk API. Now the ability to do a flat file or an SFTP, a secure file transfer protocol is what that stands for. Flat file, some people call it integration. Eloqua has this included with all versions, you can use it. Um, Salesforce Marketing Cloud, the same. Marketo and HubSpot, there's no ability to do a flat file transfer between the platforms. They just don't have the capability. Okay. And if I know of anything on these vendors' roadmaps, it's like they don't have it now, but they're going to have it like next month or soon. I'll share that. But roadmaps can be tricky. They don't always happen. So I tend to shy away from doing that if it's like a year out, for example. Okay, the native, again, native is out of the box functionalities and, and, and specifically with integrations here. Um, the native integrations you can see here, Eloqua has Salesforce CRM or Sales Cloud, Microsoft Dynamics and Oracle Sales Cloud. Marketo can integrate out of the box with Salesforce and Microsoft Dynamics. Same thing with Salesforce Marketing Cloud, though Marketing Cloud is engineered to work best with Salesforce Marketing Cloud versus Microsoft Dynamics. And then HubSpot, um, can integrate with its own CRM, HubSpot CRM, and Salesforce CRM. Um, the next thing to consider with the CRM integration, can it integrate, the marketing automation platform integrate with any CRM object with no custom coding? Eloqua can do that. The others cannot. You have to write 
either a webhook or a custom API call for, for example, Marketo to integrate with a custom object um, that's not that's a custom object in the CRM platform. So for example, sometimes people have a purchases custom object in the CRM that's tied to the opportunity object. So um, Eloqua can see that and pull from it automatically via the API. You can actually just set that up without coding with the other platforms that would involve some level of coding. The third feature here is the marketing automation platform live or production environment can integrate with more than one CRM environment. Eloqua and Salesforce Marketing Cloud can do this, Marketo, HubSpot cannot. So um, some companies actually have multiple CRMs and if they wanna buy Marketo and have two different CRMs integrated with one Marketo, you technically cannot do that. It's not possible. You'd have to have two Marketos, um, each of them connected to one CRM. And this is important when you think about testing too. So this is a big of an advantage for Eloqua and Salesforce Marketing Cloud. So an example with Eloqua, if you are setting up your Eloqua production environment for the first time and you wanna integrate it typically with your CRM test environment first, make sure everything works well, and then switch over and have Eloqua production talk to your, your CRM production environment and retest and make sure everything that you built works well with the live CRM system. So you can flip between the two inside of Eloqua to communicate with CRM test or production. Um, and we've had customers that have had multiple C different CRMs integrated with one Eloqua. So um, in Salesforce Marketing Cloud, similarly can do what I just mentioned to Eloqua, but with their large version. Um, the next feature, number four, is the marketing automation platform has an option or a feature to send the admins or whoever you want to put for email addresses into, um, into the platform to say if there's any errors, any issues with this Eloqua or, or Marketo um, CRM integration, let me know. Eloqua is the only one actually that can do this. It's a proactive feature. So reactively with Marketo, Salesforce, Marketing Cloud, and HubSpot, we have to do is log in to those platforms to monitor the integration with the CRM. Not a huge deal, but this is just one of those things where people who haven't used Eloqua, maybe use one of the other three platforms are like, oh, that's cool. That's something that, you know, at least it'll notify me before I have to go in and look for the issue. Um, and then, so typically you can resolve it more quickly is I guess the end end result. The last thing here is the integration allows for intentional duplicate leads in CRM without custom coding. Any version of Eloqua or Salesforce Marketing Cloud can handle this. So why would you even have duplicate leads on purpose intentionally in your CRM? Well, we have customers who have different business units sharing one CRM and their salespeople either compete or just should not see each other's records like leads or opportunities, accounts, contacts, uh, et cetera. So this does exist for good reasons. Um, and it's good to know for Eloqua and Salesforce Marketing Cloud that they can work with that CRM setup without custom coding, but with Marketo and HubSpot, there would be custom coding. We've done it for our customers specifically with Marketo. So now let's talk about how long these platforms retain data and manage data once the data is in there. So let's just talk about the names of the, their databases. The heart of the Eloqua database are contacts. You get up to 250 contact fields. The heart of the Marketo database is the person's object and you get as many person fields as you want. With Salesforce Marketing Cloud, their heart are contacts, 250 contact fields, similar to Eloqua, same as Eloqua. HubSpot, it's also the contacts and a thousand contact fields maximum. Um, now, data retention is very specific to the activities these platforms track, not the actual contacts and persons. Contacts and persons will stay in these platforms so long as you leave them in there. Or if you have an automated program to delete them, that's risky, be careful. But if you do, that can delete them. But the activities are what I'm talking about. They have data retention policies for things like tracking email sends, emails being delivered, open, click through, unsubscribes, opt-ins, form submissions, website visits, landing page visits, et cetera. So Eloqua retains all of those activities, all of them, no exceptions, 25 months. Marketo keeps all of them with some exceptions, everything for 25 months, except for what they coin high volume activities. Things such as website visits, automated score changes, email sends, and email delivered activities, they only stay in Marketo for 90 days. That is an important caveat to Marketo to consider, especially if you have a longer sales cycle and want to score 
or sorry, see the score change for a record that is more than 90 days old or see somebody's website visit history beyond 90 days and maybe score off of it. Salesforce Marketing Cloud keeps all the activities for six months, which seems very low compared to the others, but their answer, and you'll see this trend throughout my presentation, Salesforce Marketing Cloud and Pargot also have a lot of dependency on Salesforce CRM to function well. So if you have a different CRM than Salesforce CRM, like Microsoft Dynamics, it would be similar. It would rely a lot on CRM. So with Salesforce Marketing Cloud, they're really assuming you're going to pass a lot of these activities to CRM and store them there and be okay with the fact that they'll automatically get deleted from Marketing Cloud after six months. HubSpot, it's six months. And you could do the same thing with any of these platforms. So some customers want to have activities retain or have to legally retain them for three years, five years, et cetera. And CRM is sometimes the answer or a data warehouse more likely. Now, database partitions are ways to partition or separate records in the marketing automation platform. Mainly, like let's say you have different business units sharing one marketing automation platform and they should not be able to see or market to each other's contacts, persons. Um, so partitions are used. And it's a different word, like Eloqua calls it contact labels or label-based security. The other platforms pretty much all call it partitions. Um, so this comes with the medium and large versions of Eloqua and Marketo. It's an add-on for the small version. And then with Salesforce Marketing Cloud and HubSpot, it comes with their large version. So you can add it on and as an additional cost to Marketing Cloud and HubSpot. Now, native data management. This is probably one of the most different parts of these um, this entire presentation today, but so Eloqua um, pretty much by far has the most out of the box or native features for managing data in Eloqua. Managing it specifically meaning standardizing data, taking a pick list that is you know a bunch of messy values like country with United States, USA, U period, S period, A period, US, US period, S period, et cetera, et cetera, America. Uh, lots of different ways you can do that these days. Um, and making that field standardized, clean it up to all being one clean value, perhaps that's United States, or maybe your company uses the abbreviation US, whatever it is. So standardizing data is one element, taking uh, data from one field and pushing it to another, um, matching up records and doing things like deduplicating records. Eloqua can do a lot of that out of the box. Again, think back to the history. Eloqua was made for big organizations 20 plus years ago that had a lot of data then, even more data now, of course. And this was functionality that kept getting added. I remember just from my you know, years in this space, seeing them add stuff where I was like, I can't even fathom using the duplication rules. What are those in Eloqua? And sure enough, there are use cases for them for almost every organization. And the bigger organizations that were really diving into marketing automation first came up with those use cases and pushed Eloqua, et cetera, developers to make the functionality out of the box. So Eloqua, you can do all that stuff without coding. Marketo has what are called flow actions where you can do some of what you're doing in Eloqua, but minimally. Salesforce Marketing Cloud, quite different. So Salesforce Marketing Cloud has what's called automations um, that can do some of the data standardization, but to operate them, you have to do so cool coding, um, you leverage data extensions in Salesforce, which have a couple of different purposes, um, or oftentimes Salesforce will say, ah, don't do that in Salesforce Marketing Cloud, do it in Salesforce CRM. It's better at managing data. So that's oftentimes when we see sales cycles where our customers are evaluating Salesforce Marketing Cloud, that's the answer they'll get is manage the data more in CRM, less in the marketing automation platform. But for us, we don't typically prefer that. Usually you get your leads and put them in the marketing automation platform first, clean the data or standardize the data, score it, and then pass it to CRM. So it's cleanly passed to the CRM and only the records that should pass to the CRM are passed there. The others are maybe nurtured in the marketing automation platform to get them to a higher score or more ready for sales ultimately. So um, HubSpot has also what's called automation. So it, it's, um, you know, Eloqua calls those update rules. Marketo calls them flow actions. Salesforce calls them automations. Mark, HubSpot calls them automations. So they all have some level of data management, but it's quite minimal with all three compared to Eloqua. All right, so next thing here is field change history tracking. So this is where I wanna see, for instance, the title field. 
have a history I can look at as somebody's title changes, I can see that. Eloqua has this feature for up to 10 contact fields. It will track the changes for those fields you select for any amount of time, unlimited. Marketo will do this feature as well for an unlimited number of person fields. However, for those you select, it will only store the field changes for 90 days. That's important to keep in mind, which it might be sufficient for your needs. Salesforce Marketing Cloud and HubSpot do not have this feature, but their CRMs do. So they will typically recommend do that in the CRM system and then do a custom solution to pass the changes to um, the marketing automation platform if you need to know that history was, that there was a change in the field history. Okay, now let's go on to custom objects. So what is a custom object? Just so we're on the same playing field here. A custom object is really used to store data against a contact or a person record in the marketing automation platform. It's separate from that contact or person record. It's typically used for a, a one to many scenario where I'm one KP, but I've had many survey responses over the last year. And you wanna see each one of my separate survey responses and what I put into each. If you put that on contact fields, it'll only show the most recent survey response that I filled out. So custom objects were created in these platforms, most of them many years ago, to allow you to scale your data model. So things that are often in custom data objects, they're called an Eloqua or custom objects in most of the other platforms, data extensions in Salesforce. Um, you might put event registrations in there, event attendance, webinar registrations, webinar attendance, survey responses, purchases, promotional codes, et cetera. So the ability to create and manage a custom object in the marketing automation platform. You can do this in all versions of Eloqua, all versions of Marketo right in the platform. In Salesforce Marketing Cloud, you can also do it in all versions. They call it data extensions, not custom objects. Um, but it does require Sokol skills to build the data extensions and maintain them. HubSpot, all versions. Um, however, you can only create the custom object via their API, and it must be related to a HubSpot standard object like the contact object. Now, the next feature, the maximum number of custom objects allowed in each marketing automation platform. This is a hard limit. Um, so with Eloqua small version, you get three. With the medium and large versions, you get an unlimited number of custom objects. There's no, literally no limit. You could have 500 custom objects. I don't know why you would need that many, but you could have them. With Marketo, each of their versions comes with 10 custom objects, except for the small one, no custom objects. They changed this a lot at Adobe. Um, one year it was zero, five, 10. Now it's 10 and 10 and zero. So Salesforce Marketing Cloud, they don't do this by the number of data extensions. They do it by the amount of data coming to Salesforce Marketing Cloud. So you can see it's one megabyte, 15 megabytes and 100 megabytes, depending on which version you get. HubSpot, no custom objects come with their small and medium versions. You get 10 with their large. Now let's say you wanted to get, you're, you're down to Marketo or HubSpot and you're looking at their small version. You can add on custom objects to the small version. So you can certainly do an additional cost to add on. Um, now the maximum records across those custom objects in each platform. This is a soft limit. This is what these platforms are built to hold. Can you go beyond these soft limits? Yes, whenever there's a soft limit, you can technically exceed it, but you are pushing that platform. It's like you're driving a Porsche and you're going actually too fast for what that engine can handle. Can it do it? Yeah, but might the engine like catch on fire <laughs> and blow up? Possibly. So Eloqua, all versions, you can have up to 25 million records in your custom objects. A record is like a survey response or of an event webinar um, attendance, or event webinar information for me, like the event that I attended last week and the details about it. It's a record. Marketo, you get, again, zero with their small version, 2 million with medium or large version. So big difference there already, 25 and 2. Salesforce Marketing Cloud has the most 30 million records with their large version. Again, remember, because the large version is the one that has the most uh, space to store the custom objects and their records. HubSpot, strikingly low at 500,000. So just in comparison to the others, 25 million, 2 million, 30 million, and 500,000. So they have not yet built out their capacity to hold a lot of custom object records. Now, the next thing has to do with usability. How easy is it to use these custom objects in the marketing automation platform? So um, in Eloqua, you can view, you can do everything. You can view a custom object record or custom object, create, edit, delete, all within the interface. You can also use a file upload to say mass delete or mass create or mass edit 
um, records in a custom object. And same thing with the API. Marketo is close, but not quite. So you can view in Marketo the custom object records. Like you can see my survey responses. But if you want to create a new one for testing purposes, edit an existing, delete existing, you have to do that with Marketo via a file upload or their API. Salesforce Marketing Cloud, um, you can view, create, edit, delete within the platform and the interface and via API, not file upload. That's the only exception there. And then HubSpot is more like Marketo kind of, um, but you can view in HubSpot the custom objects and their records. If you want to change any of the records, you have to do that via the API. So in HubSpot, you get the least amount of ability as a user to manage the custom object records. You have to use the API to create the custom objects and then the API to edit the records in those custom objects. Now, the last thing here is, um, great, you've got the custom object uh, built in the marketing automation platform. You've got data in them. What can you do with them as far as personalization? A lot of times you have that data in there, not just for personalization, sometimes for scoring or for segmentation, but personalization is oftentimes the top of the list of reasons of why you want this data in the platform to make sure that if you know somebody just purchased a product that you don't have a nurture campaign trying to get them to register for a demo about that same product. They just bought it. We don't want to try to get them to watch a demo of it. You've already done that probably. Um, so all versions of these platforms, thankfully, can use custom object data uh, for personalization. The one caveat is specifically with Pardot, you cannot. But when we're talking about Salesforce Marketing Cloud, again, just as a reminder, we're talking about Engagement Cloud. And then Pardot, which has been renamed Account Management, um, has been uh, kind of folded under Salesforce Marketing Cloud, but it still can be used standalone or on top of Salesforce Marketing Cloud, specifically Engagement Cloud. Okay, let's go into campaign ma campaign management. And I'm gonna start with right now, just the basics and then get into more like the multi-channel on the next slide. So they all have the ability to create a segment or an audience. Some people might call it a list um, and it's all versions of Eloqua, Marketo and HubSpot. With Salesforce Marketing Cloud, it comes with their medium and large versions um, and does require so cool coding. So you're, you're probably seeing a trend here with Salesforce Marketing Cloud, you either want to ensure you have someone or some ones with SOQL coding skills or an agency that you have that works with you to help you use Salesforce Marketing Cloud effectively with those SOQL skills. Comes in very handy with Salesforce Marketing Cloud. The ability to drag and drop to build a campaign or an automated journey. All versions of Eloqua have this. All versions of Marketo have it. They do have a limitation of one workflow um, with basic conditions, so it has some limitations. Salesforce Marketing Cloud, this comes with their large version. You can add it on to the small and medium. HubSpot does not yet have a drag and drop campaign builder. It's more linear. Um, and Okay, keep going. So the ability to start a campaign, stop it, edit it, and then restart it. You can do this with all versions of Eloqua and Marketo. With Salesforce Marketing Cloud, you can do it with all versions, but you can only keep that journey paused for 14 days. And then HubSpot does not have this capability. The next feature number four, so the ability to clone the campaign, like the, the flow of the campaign with all the different decisions it's making and action that's taking. Um, and if it has, let's say, three emails built into that, that campaign um, and three landing pages, maybe three forms, that's nine different assets. Um, with Marketo and HubSpot, you can hit what's similar to each of these, a clone button. And it will not just copy the workflow, but all nine of those assets as well. It makes copies of each and plugs them into that clone campaign. With Eloqua and Salesforce Marketing Cloud, there is no clone feature. So what you can do is you can copy the flow, but it will keep the same assets that you copied from. So you have to remember to go in and build new assets if new assets are needed. Um, and then similarly with Marketo and HubSpot, even though it's made copied versions of the nine assets I mentioned, the emails, landing pages, and forms, they're copied versions, so you still have to remember to go in and revise them. Or if you meant to actually pick original assets, like you didn't really want to build a new email, you want to make sure you go in there and select the correct email. So, All right, email A-B testing. All of these platforms can do email A-B testing in some flavor or another out of the box. With HubSpot, you um, get it with the medium and large versions. You'd have to add it on. It's an additional cost to the small version. Number six here, email send time optimization. This is basically where the platform, before it sends out an email, 
It checks for the best time to send it to me based on my open or click through history or combination of those things. Typically nowadays we're looking more at somebody's click history given that opens aren't as reliable or some of these platforms, they automatically remove the auto clicks that email scanners do like Apple Mail was a big deal raised last year when they came out with a new release for their iPhones and iPads and Apple Mail users to do more thorough scanning of emails. So if a scanner's opening an email, it's not really a person. You want to make sure that that's not included because if the scanner's opening it on Fridays at 9 a.m., but KP typically opens her emails at on Mondays at 3 p.m., Mondays at 3 p.m. are the better time when a human being opens it. So um, email send time optimization, this comes with Eloquist's paid add-on. They call it their AI advanced intelligence add-on. Or there are some third-party solutions out there that can also do send time optimization like Motiva AI. Marketo, it's a paid third-party app that you would use on top of Marketo to do send time optimization. Salesforce Marketing Cloud, this comes with their large version with their Einstein feature. You can add that on to their small and medium versions. And then HubSpot does not yet have send time optimization. Email subject line optimization. So this is a this comes with the Eloqua paid at AI add-on. Um, Eloquist paid AI add-on comes with like four feature sets. These are just two of them. You can't piecemeal and take out and say, I only want these two features and that AI add-on, you get all of it or nothing. So hopefully that changes one day at Oracle. But if you're like, I just want the send time optimization, STO add-on for Eloqua, you can't just get that. You have to get the full AI add-on. Okay, so some subject line optimization um, and then keep going. For Marketo, they're... They don't have this feature yet. HubSpot does not have this feature yet. Salesforce marketing does with their large version. Now a marketing calendar, actual calendar view inside of the marketing automation platform. Eloqua does not have this, has never had it. Um, you have to use a paid third party app on top of Eloqua to see and manage a calendar view. Eloqua has more of a line by line or row view of the uh, active, completed and open, not active or completed campaigns, but uh, Marketo, Salesforce, Marketing Cloud, and HubSpot all do have marketing calendars that come with them in all versions. Okay, so now let's switch campaign management to looking at their, how well do they handle multi-channel? So email, they all come with the ability to send emails out, all versions. And then the next number two here is forms and landing pages. So they all, except for Salesforce, Marketing Cloud, allow you to build forms and landing pages with all versions. Salesforce Marketing Cloud, it does not come with their smaller version you add on. Um, they have a couple of different features for forms and landing pages, smart capture forms and such. Um, and then the important caveat with Salesforce Marketing Cloud forms is they aren't similar to the other three platforms forms. The other three platforms have the ability to receive form submissions and process that data. They call it different things like Eloqua calls it processing steps, but uh, Marketing Cloud, it has less of those, what you would call processing steps, the ability to take the data and add it to a, a custom object or a data extension, um, to send somebody a confirmation email. All these platforms can do that in some flavor or another, but um, Marketing Cloud is relying more on AMP scripts or so cool coding to leverage their forms. Now, mobile, sending out text messages, automated voice messages, in-app messages, so Eloqua has paid SMS as an add-on to their product. It's native functionality. They just came out with, um, I think it was generally available for everybody Q1 and earlier this year. It was in testing last year. So um, you can do SMS, but not MMS, which is basically text messages that include video or uh, GIFs, imagery. That's MMS. But Eloqua can do SMS. And then paid, you can use paid third-party apps with Eloqua to do SMS or other things I just mentioned with mobile, like Twilio is one of the most common mobile platforms, mobile marketing platforms. Marketo um, can do with their paid vibes add-on, SMS, in-app notifications, or you can use a third-party like Twilio on top of Marketo. Salesforce Marketing Cloud um, is really the one that takes the cake here. So they actually have a mobile studio that you can do most of these mobile marketing tactics on. Um, so it's a whole add-on for Salesforce Marketing Cloud. And then HubSpot doesn't have anything natively. You use a third-party app on top of HubSpot. Like for instance, I mentioned Twilio and there's others out there. Direct mail. 
All of them rely on third party apps on top of their platforms to do direct mail. Um, website chat. Um, so after, this is a random fact for anybody that didn't know, Eloqua, it's a weird name. Um, Eloqua used to be, when it was first developed in 1999, it was a website chat tool developed by a couple of Canadians. And the reason they chose the word Eloqua was to help their customers speak eloquently to their website visitors. So they didn't keep that date, that website chat functionality very long. The internet bubble burst in 1999 and 2000. So they had to shift their, their business and um, shift it to marketing automation focused features. But anyway, so website chat, Eloqua doesn't have a feature for this. You have to use an add-on like Zendesk or Drift. There's various out there. Marketo, they added on in the last year a dynamic chat feature. So you can use their dynamic chat for um, website chat functionality or conversational marketing as some people call it. Um, and you can always add on Drift and use that integration with Marketo and any of these, but Salesforce Marketing Cloud, it'd be a paid third-party app. And then HubSpot, similar to Marketo, they have their own website chat feature. It's called Conversations. So you can add that on to HubSpot Marketing and integrate the data from your website chats to HubSpot Marketing Hub. Social integration. So I have an asterisk here and just want to point out none of these marketing automation platforms replace a social marketing management platform such as Hootsuite, Octopus, Sprout. Those platforms are doing, they can do mass listening for your brand, different terms that like Sojourn Solutions, Sojourn, Eloqua Consultants, blah, blah, blah. Um, these platforms do that mass listening. They do mass publishing out. Like if you're on five social media sites, like maybe you're on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest. I don't know. Uh, maybe Twitch, maybe TikTok, maybe that too. So that's seven. I think I just listed off. You would ideally manage how well you're doing with those listening on those different social sites, um, mass publishing. So you've got a new case study you want to get out on all the channels, the social channels. Maybe you don't, maybe you just want to pick four of them. Well, a social platform like Octopus or Hootsuite is best fit for that. It will also have better analytics than these platforms have. So there is some level of social integration with these marketing automation platforms with like Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, with Eloqua and Marketo, there's some level there. Um, saying this very carefully because people tend to think that they're going to buy one of these platforms and get all the features they would get with like Octopus and you just don't. The closest one was Salesforce Marketing Cloud with their social studio. However, they plan to retire it in November of 2024. Don't know why, um, but anyway, probably because it didn't sell. Usually when a company retires stuff, it didn't sell enough. But, um, and it's debatable whether it was good or not. I did ask somebody like, well, do you think it was because it wasn't a great platform? Like Oracle used to have a social platform called Social Relationship Management and they retired theirs. They bought a company had it for a few years for a social platform and then retired it. Salesforce is doing the same thing with their social studio in, in 2024. HubSpot does have, again, like Eloqua Marketo, some level of integration with some social sites with their medium and large versions. So what I'm saying there is you probably still need, if you're doing social marketing um, and really trying to leverage building your brand there or getting leads there, uh, customer advocacy efforts there, I would recommend getting a best of breed social platform like Octopus for Hootsuite. Scoring, that's a whole nother evaluation. Marketing automation platforms and then social platforms are something else to look at. So scoring, this is where I mentioned earlier that there's the most similarity. So let's just dive right in. Um, the ability for the marketing automation platform to score, uh, have multiple scoring engines or models or programs running at the same time. Eloqua, you can do it, um, but with their smaller, their cheapest version, you only get one live. With their medium version, you can have 15 scoring engines live. And with their large version, which comes with 20 Eloqua environments, you can have 30 scoring engines per instance. Um, so 600 actually, but hopefully nobody ever needs that. Marketo, um, there's no limit to the number of smart campaigns you can have for scoring in Marketo in any version. Salesforce Marketing Cloud, they don't have scoring. That's, this is a big thing to point out. Salesforce Marketing Cloud out of the box does not have automated scoring. Pardot has some level of it. So some people will either buy Pardot and use that functionality on top of Salesforce Marketing Cloud or use a more robust scoring tool, which um, one of the most common paid ads paid add-ons for Salesforce Marketing Cloud for scoring is called Sales Wings. They're a separate company. 
they made an app for Salesforce Marketing Cloud to do scoring and they do some other stuff too, but that's what they're best known for. HubSpot, you can, um, with their small version, you can't do automated scoring. You can add it on to it if you want, but medium version, you get five live scoring engines and um, their large version, 25. Number two feature here related to scoring is the ability for the, that marketing automation scoring engine to automatically degrade or decrease somebody's score if they're not as hot of a lead now as they were, say, three months ago or six months ago or two years ago. Um, Eloqua does this in all versions of Eloqua automatically. The way it does it is it resets everybody's score every day and recalculates. Now, with Marketo and HubSpot, it can be done, but you have to build it into your, your smart campaign. Um, and then same thing with HubSpot with, I think it's their uh, automation workflows that do the scoring. With Salesforce Marketing Cloud, you would use the paid sales rings add-on to build that functionality in to automatically degrade scores. So um, multiple scores viewable inside the CRM. So let's say that you have the marketing automation platform set up with three scoring engines live and three separate scores for people because you have three different product lines. Eloqua, all versions can pass those three scores back to the CRM system or your data warehouse, wherever. Um, and it can be viewable in the Eloqua sales tool. In this case, it's called Profiler. Marketo sales tool will only show one of those scores. There's not a way you can toggle between the three in my example here. Uh, and then similarly with Marketo, you have to get also more creative for if you have three different fields, say on the person record capturing three different scores to make sure they get passed to the correct fields in CRM, typically on like a leader, a contact object. And then with Salesforce Marketing Cloud, again, not out of the box, sales wings is what you would use to figure out how to engineer this most likely customize to pass those three scores in my example or multiple scores to the CRM system and make available in the sales tools in Salesforce CRM. HubSpot does not do this. They don't have sales tools for their CRM. Um, the CRM is a sales tool hypothetically here, but I mean, of course it is, but there's tools marketing automation platforms come with that are sales enablement tools. Basically their views into the activities the marketing automation platform is tracking and are made to be as easy for a salesperson to digest as possible, as quick and easy. Um, and Eloqua and Marketo have really developed their sales tools over the years, but the others have not really, or haven't built any at all, like with HubSpot. Okay, account scoring. I got to wrap this up here. We have eight minutes left. Account scoring. Eloqua, you can do that with their account fields object. Um, they also have the Oracle DataFox add-on. DataFox does account scoring, and they can pass that via the out-of-the-box integration with Eloqua to Eloqua. Um, and then there's also the Eloqua paid AI add-on that I mentioned earlier. Account scoring is one of the features in it. However, it only does engagement or activity scoring. It does not do demographic firmographic scoring. Marketo, you can use Marketo account fields to do account scoring, or there's third-party apps you can use on top of Marketo um, paid third-party apps. Salesforce Marketing Cloud, you would oftentimes use the Pardot add-on or account engagement. I, I mentioned account management earlier. That wasn't right. Pardot is renamed account engagement. But you can use Pardot, uh, in essence, to do account scoring or the sales wing add-on for Salesforce Marketing Cloud. Both are an extra cost. HubSpot, with their medium large versions, you can do account scoring. No paid add-on. Predictive scoring. Eloqua, Marketo, it's a paid third party. They don't have predictive scoring out of the box yet at all. Salesforce Marketing Cloud, it comes with their medium and large versions, and it comes with a HubSpot large version. You can add it on to small and medium. Okay, the other category. So... The number of users that come with the platform is commonly overlooked by buyers. So the number of marketing users, like whether that's your admin of the platform, somebody just going in there building campaigns, journeys, emails, et cetera. Um, now we're gonna just talk about the medium version of each of these platforms that's most commonly bought, by the way, by people. And um, Eloqua comes with 50 users, Marketo 25, you can see Salesforce 15, HubSpot five. So just keep that in mind. Like, so for example, you're looking at HubSpot's medium version and you have 15 people that are going to need to use it, you're going to need to ask that salesperson to build in an additional 10 users. And of course it will cost more. Um, the number of reporting users that comes with the medium version, 50 for Eloqua, I mean, it's the same amount. You can see it kind of trickles down. Again, you can add on more, you just have to pay more or negotiate really strongly and somehow get them tossed in there. Um, third feature, the reporting tool in the marketing automation platform actually is a business intelligence tool. Yes, with Eloqua, it's called Insights or Oracle Business Intelligence. Um, they add, they change that 
quite a few years ago in Eloqua. It used to be MicroStrategy, but that was the business intelligence tool that was that came with Eloqua. Now it's an Oracle business intelligence tool. It has been for a couple of years called Insight. Um, and it comes with all versions. There's no paid add-on for it. It just comes with all versions. Marketo, you have to pay extra to get what they call their visible or Marketo measure add-on. Um, Salesforce Marketing Cloud, they have their Datarama um, business intelligence tool, just like Marketo Measure business intelligence tool. They're both really good at marketing attribution reporting analytics, um, but Datarama comes with the medium and large versions of Salesforce Marketing Cloud. You can add it on to the small version. HubSpot doesn't have a business intelligence tool. They have their own reporting. Now, could you just use Marketo or HubSpot or Salesforce Marketing Cloud without any add-ons and just use their out-of-the-box reports and dashboards? Absolutely. We typically see people outgrow them though after a year or two because of the inability to customize reports and dashboards or mix and match metrics. Uh, artificial intelligence, I've already mentioned Eloqua has their paid AI add-on. It does not come with any version of Eloqua. Marketo has their Sensei add-on. It does come with the medium and large versions. You can add it onto the small version. Same thing with Salesforce Marketing Cloud to Marketo, except for they call it Einstein. And then HubSpot does not have AI yet for it. They do, I think, have some AI features for their HubSpot CRM, but not Marketing Hub. Last feature here, the Marketing Automation Platform has a sandbox and test environment included, and that can connect to, they can connect, um, sorry, the sandbox environment to the production environment. This comes with Eloqua and Marketo's large version. You get a sandbox or a test environment, and it does connect to production. But if you set stuff up, you have to take that setup that you've done in sandbox and manually reset it up in production. It's weird. The, the connection is in Eloqua and Marketo. Whatever you've built in production, you could hit a button and it will push that setup, most of it, to the sandbox, but not vice versa. Normally people want vice versa. Okay, Salesforce Marketing Cloud. Um, all the people that get the large version have what are called business units, which usually you use one of those business units as a test environment. Okay, and then HubSpot, their large version, just like Eloqua Marketo, does come with a test environment and it does connect to production. Okay, my last tip to leave you guys with is evaluating the features is obviously critical. It's the paramount thing to do in a marketing automation platform evaluation. It's gonna be what helps you to figure out you know, the functionality there that will help you achieve your goals. But if you don't set up these platforms right, and I've been consulting for 13 years and I've seen implementations go well, I've learned a lot myself. I didn't do a great job as a consultant the first few years. I just didn't know what I was doing, but I've learned a lot about how you properly set up these platforms. And so my recommendation here is just to make sure you evaluate whoever the team is that's going to help you implement the platform um, and really evaluate them well. I would get at least two proposals from a company like Sojourn and one other one. I would not do it all internally. Um, even just the project management of a loan is something, you know, dotting all your I's, crossing all your T's. There's so much to consider. And unless you're doing this for a, a day job, it's very easy to make mistakes during an implementation that can cost the business a lot of money and time and frustrations. So I always recommend shopping for the best platform and implementation team. Doesn't mean you have to work with that implementation team forever, but ideally have somebody who has done dozens, if not hundreds of the marketing automation platform implementations that you're choosing. And here's some questions to ask them. How many implementations of Marketo has your team completed? Um, how many years of implementation experience would our consultant assigned to us have or somebody like them have? Two years, a little risky. Uh, eight years, great. Hopefully they're you know, more experienced and know what to ask us before we even think to ask it. And then how many of your consultants are certified? It's not easy to get certified on some of these platforms. So showing that you're certified shows that your business is taking it seriously, that you are true experts on the marketing automation platforms. And then specifically asking, this is where I see people are like, KP, thank you for sending us a proposal that was detailed with another vendor. We chose them. And then we found out weren't happy that our team has to do a lot of the work. We thought they were doing it. We were paying them a lot of money for it. Turns out, um, there, we're doing most of it. And that's very common at Oracle, Adobe, and Salesforce consulting. Not always, but oftentimes they're low. If they have a low price proposal for you, it's because it's assuming your team will do most of the configuration, most of the work. So that said, also, if you get a quote for implementing one of these platforms for less than 10,000 USD, you can probably assume your team's going to be doing most of the work or you're going to be getting a very inexperienced consultant um, most of the time. 
So thanks for attending. We've run out of time. We have less than a minute left here. I don't see any questions in the Q&A or the chat. I do this quarterly. So the next webinar will be January 18th, same time, same place. But again, let me know if you have questions. I'm going to email you this recording later today. If you want to have this conversation one-on-one, -on -one, I'm more than happy to do that. And just be candid with you on um, like I have today, you know, the pros and cons of these platforms. They're all great platforms and each fit, you know, each company at different times in their journey really well. And then people can outgrow some of them. So I'm happy to help. Uh, thank you guys for attending today. Hope you have a great rest of your Wednesday and a nice week. Bye, everybody.